Now, what I'm about to say may make some foreign nationals abroad who feel that they have the right to say and do whatever they want, wherever they want, unhappy or outright furious. And if you're a foreign national who feels this way, you need to sit down and listen. You know, every nation of the world wants their citizens to pledge allegiance to a flag or a document that dictates how people of their nation should behave and interact with each other. In addition, nations want their citizens to be able to reflect on their country's history for unity and inspiration for a better future. This is normal. So the reality is, every country works hard to install within the minds of its people a sense of pride or what some people call nationalism. Foreign nationals who really may be only a guest in their host nation should be aware and sensitive of this. And this is a fact. Now, I use the terms aware and sensitive in this case because it should be easy to understand how someone who isn't a native of a country can unintentionally say and even do things in the nation they reside in and have it interpreted in negative ways by the people from the local population who have pride in their nation and would be more than willing to protect it at any cost. Now, we all have a narrative about our home nation that has been embedded in our personal mindsets, and it's hard to break away from learning and knowing the differences between nationalism, patriotism, and propaganda isn't an available tool for people living in some nations of the world, and that is also a fact. Most people are taught that their nation's history and its culture are endowed with the benevolent attributes that make it the greatest nation on earth without questioning, debate, or any peer review. Citizens are even taught who to associate with and who are allies and enemies. Keeping this in mind, Many of the stories that we have learned about other nations, including our own, have been embellished with ingredients that have been simplified, exaggerated, mystified, or even flat out falsified. And unfortunately, every nation is guilty of doing this. And the outcome is that elements have become indistinguishable between facts and fiction. Regardless of a foreign national's personal background, belief system, politics, or religion, he or she must admit that every nation, including his or her own, has built or adopted rules, regulations, or doctrines that were and may be still embedded in the minds of millions of people from an early age. And these guidelines or social rules are expected to be followed to ensure harmony under national governance. So the source most people of the world rely on for cultural or national identity is rooted in their nation's political system, dogma, or in some cases, religion. They are taught a version of the differences or interpretations between the goodisms and the badisms. And it becomes extremely difficult or even impossible for people under certain political systems to have discussions comparing or questioning the validity of the makings of their nation or their national structure because it may be deemed too controversial, sensitive, disrespectful, or downright dangerous. Does it sound familiar to any place you know? Because it does to me. So it becomes beneficial that we all learn how to search for the truths that can help teach each and every one of us how to separate Facts and fiction. Now, this comes down to a situation some foreign nationals may find themselves in while living overseas. When foreign nationals live outside of the country they are from, regardless of the reasons why, they will most likely one day feel the need or desire to search for individuals within their immediate environment who can share with them some of the things they are missing from their home country. Things like, but not limited to, food, music, holidays, and the list goes on. 
Simple little things in a foreign national's life overseas can trigger the need to reconnect with elements that remind them of home. Occurrences like a local or international sporting event can bring a sense of commonality and create a link between other foreign nationals who share the sh- same types of memories. No matter what the reasons are, it is always a good idea to be around and interact with people who share things in common with you. And sometimes hanging out with people who share your same culture and language can help you lessen the stress you may be experiencing while in an overseas environment. So if you're a foreign national sharing these types of memories with other foreign nationals, you may begin to feel reassured that you aren't the only one thinking about such things and it becomes relaxing to know that you aren't losing your mind or going crazy. Sometimes while these interactions are taking place and connections become stronger between foreign nationals, topics may seem to take another direction or in some cases get derailed. Topics may begin to focus on comparisons and contrasts between the things the foreign nationals have in common with the things and events that take that take place or occur within their host nation. And this can be a tricky. Now, it becomes almost inevitable that comments may in some ways elevate elements of a foreign nationals view of his or her home nation over the events or the way things are done within their host nation. And this is where things become perplexing and begin to form a foreign national virtual signaling or moral self-licensing. This is where the mental cultural clouds begin to set in. And this can easily lead to misunderstandings or selective cultural amnesia. So as a foreign national, you may occasionally find yourself coming across other foreign nationals who feel strongly out of place in their overseas environment and, as a result, may harbor particular opinions about their host nation's environment, politics, educational systems, and ways, simple ways of doing things. If that is heard by someone who's from the host nation, it can sound condescending, immature, disrespectful, or even in some cases, outright racist. So my question to you today is, how would you as a foreign national receive and react to such comments from another foreign national? Do you or would you add legitimacy to the comments by confirming and agreeing with them? Would you condemn or disassociate yourself from such comments? Or would you just remain silent? Foreign nationals abroad while working or traveling must remain aware or constantly vigilant of how they react and interact with people of their home nation and host nation, because the rules in your home nation may not apply to your host nation. Foreign nationals abroad while working or traveling must remain aware or constantly vigilant that how they react and interact with people of their home nation may not apply to how they should live and react or interact among people in other nations who live under, well, different social constructs and rules. Now, this doesn't mean that a foreign national should or must give up his or her personal belief system. The only thing I hope to achieve is to give those who are living outside of their home nation a sense of self-awareness that may help them build a closer understanding of their host nation along with the people who make up the nation they reside in without fear of being misinterpreted or blacklisted. For those of you who are living outside of your home nation, how would you react if another foreign national uses his or her cultural preferences to judge the people and events that occur within a host nation? How would you react? What would you say? Would you just let the comments fly by and let it go in one ear and out the other? Please leave a comment below if you have anything you would like to say or share concerning this topic. And if you found what we have to offer of any value, please click on the subscribe and bell buttons to help us spread the word that we have a lot more in common than we think. We're very interested to hear what you have to say. For Four Seas One Family, I'm James Thomas in Taipei, Taiwan. And remember, take care wherever you are.